Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're talking to a man who loves barbecue almost as much as I do. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. In today's episode of the podcast, we're talking with Alex Lawson from the Barbecue Base podcast based out of uh, New Zealand and Burnt Beginnings Barbecue competitive team. But before we get into that, I've got a couple of quick announcements that I want to run by you. The first is that you need to keep the weekend of June 26 and 27 free. Smoking Hot Confessions is putting on the world's first virtual barbecue conference. So the Saturday, the 26th of June, we're going to be jumping into the backyards of pitmasters all around Australia, and we're going to be showing you how they like to cook their uh, their trophy winning food, their briskets, their pulled pork, their beef ribs, all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be the Saturday, all around uh, cooking food. The Sunday is is for barbecue businesses. So if you've got a barbecue business or if you're um, looking to get into a barbecue business, that day is going to be for you. So we're going to have leaders of of industry um, from around the country sharing their wisdom and their tips and their advice as well so that you can build your barbecue business and be equally as successful as them. So that's the 26th and 27th of June. That's BarbieCon. It's the world's first online barbecue conference. So make sure you pencil that into your calendars because there's going to be a lot more information coming out about that soon. Now, the next thing that I need to tell you about, if you're just at the beginning of your barbecue journey, head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com, have a bit of a click around. We've got a free ebook available for you. It's the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. So it's uh, it's completely free. All you need to do is when the pop-up window appears, put your details into that and we'll shoot that straight out into your inbox for you. It's everything you need to know to hit the ground running, smoking delicious meats. It's absolutely wonderful stuff. The next thing is, if you have a Facebook account, you're on Facebook, do come and join us at the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community. It is the nicest barbecue group on Facebook. Um, We love it. We spend a lot of time in there. We work hard to curate it, keep it it a nice, friendly, family-friendly corner of the internet. So if you want to come hang out with some uh, some family-minded people and talk about barbecue, then this is the place for you, and we'd love to have you. Now, if you are joining us live today on YouTube, do give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. If you're watching the replay later on Facebook, give us a thumbs up and a share. If you've got some comments you want to pop on there as well, do make sure you're following us because that's going to be important for you. If you're on IGTV, give us one of those cute little love hearts and a follow so you get to be notified next time we put a video up on IGTV. And on Apple Podcasts, do give us a five-star rating and review because that trips the algorithms and it tells Apple to put the show out to more people like yourself. Okay, so today's episode, Alex from Barbecue Base Podcast in New Zealand. He's also a competitor with Burnt Beginnings Barbecue. Now, that barbecue team is a trophy-winning team, and it includes having gotten a perfect score for brisket and first place for dessert at a particularly large competition. So we're going to hear all about that very shortly. Now, the Barbecue Base Podcast is a fantastic um barbecue podcast obviously it's based out of New Zealand they cover the New Zealand barbecue scene but they also get a whole lot of international guests in as well so if you're looking for another one to add to your playlist definitely check them out now we are going to hear all about that from Alex so I think it's time we bring him in here what do you reckon this is the internationally awarded smoking hot confessions barbecue podcast with your host Ben Arnott how long has it been since your last confession G'day, Alex. How are you, mate? Welcome to The Confessional. Hey, thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. And a big hello from the land of the long white cloud just across the ditch from yourselves, probably the, the little brother to big brother Aussie. But, you know, we like to think we punch above our weight and every now and again. Absolutely you do, yeah. You know, it's it's actually kind of funny that you mentioned the the land of the long white cloud because I um I wrote that in my uh, description of this when I was putting up the the notices that the, that we were going to go live and do this. And then I wanted to know why it was called the land of the long white cloud. And there's actually like this really fascinating, um, very old cultural story behind that. It's really cool, really interesting stuff. I must admit, being a, I mean, I've been an import here for the last 15 years and I probably haven't gone and looked that up in my time here either. <laughs> so maybe I should be doing that as well. Yeah, from from memory, it was something to do with a, with a, with a princess and, uh, you know, the, the typical princess love story, tragedy, and then all the rest of it. And yeah, it became the land of the long white cloud. Uh, anyway, let's stop talking about clouds. Tell me, what was the last thing that you barbecued? 
Uh, the last thing I barbecued, I think, was um, no, it was a couple of weeks, but um, some pork butts and chicken wings uh, for the Super Bowl, which is a big a big day in my house. So, um, you know, we have a lot of people over, so we we did the pork butts, we did pulled pork, we had uh, mac and cheese, chicken wings with various sauces, uh, basically more food than we could feed probably fifty people with, and there was about fifteen of us, so. So it was a good day. So uh, uh, it, it it was a regular backyard barbecue then, pretty much. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, you will not go home hungry if you come to a, a, a do at my house. No, nah, we're we're very much the same. Vacuum sealers into the freezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell me more about these chicken wings. We love doing chicken wings here at Smoking Hot Confessions. Tell me how you like to do yours. Uh, so. Um, Look, for that, we just smoked them. So we we didn't deep fry them or anything like that afterwards. We have done deep fried in uh, SCA and stuff like that. My partner in the team, he actually did very well with the last time he did those. But um, we just smoked them. We rubbed them pretty simply when we're at home. You know, it's not like multiple layers of rub or anything like that. Just a, a rub with our favorite um, rub. And then I think chicken wings is all about the sauce, right? It's all about what you put with it. So... I like things quite spicy, um, so I do a buffalo sauce, and then I, I add some extra, uh, some of our extra hot um, chili sauce in there as well. So this time there was some ghost pepper sauce that went in. I reserved the uh, Dragon's Fury, um, which is our regular ten burning questions hot sauce. Um, I didn't put that in because I had other people coming around. I didn't want to kill them. Um, so we did that. <laughs> we did some plain, yeah, some plain for kids, and then some just with a, a just a nice barbecue sauce, as um, you know that kind of stuff. So simple to spicy, but not um, crazy because you know, I didn't want to be. I actually, to be honest, I didn't want to be cooking stuff all the way through the game. So <laughs> I wanted to be able to watch the game. Well, yeah, the, the whole point of putting on a game do is that you get to watch the game. So, yeah, I totally understand that. Now, with that, with that buffalo sauce, do you make that from scratch or do you have a particular favorite off-the-shelf one that you go to? Uh, I used, uh, for this one, I used the Cullies, which is a New Zealand sauce brand. Um, they do a buffalo, uh, a nice hot buffalo sauce, which is really good. Um, and then I mix in the other um, sauce. I, I I mean, you could go through making, and some people love making the sauces and that's all good. I'm probably on the other side of it where I'm more about, actually, I don't want to spend, you know, hours making the sauce. I'd rather spend the time cooking and then, you know, the sauces, there are people who make sauces way better than me. So why make it difficult on myself? You know, you should always be a hero when you serve barbecue. Um, and if that means using a, a bought sauce, then I'm, I'm all fine with that. Yeah, fair enough. I I remember when I first started getting into this, I was making all my own sauces and things, and then and then more and more things started to appear off the shelf, and barbecue specialty stores opened, and I actually couldn't tell you the last time I made my own sauce because it's just so much easier to go grab something off the shelf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, my uh, my favorite thing with uh, chicken wings at the moment is um, I'm in love with it's from Deep Southeast. It's the sweet meat rub, I think it's called. It's quite a spicy rub for white meat. And then I pair that with um, one-legged, one-legged chook, one-legged chicken from uh, from Lanes, and I cut that mm-hmm. with some butter and some apple cider vinegar because I like it. It's a bit bit tangier, and uh, mm. oh man, it's so good. Yeah, I'm actually a fan of the uh, which which a lot of people aren't, but the Tennessee Red from Blues Hog, which is their kind of more vinegar sauce. So yep. I like I like actually just dipping ribs in that straight off the. Th- off, out of the out of the jar into a little bowl and dip the ribs in it and have the the vinegar sauce. But uh, a lot of people, including the rest of my family, are like, "Do not put the vinegar sauce on everything." Um, okay, but I, I love it. I think it's my British upbringing. You know, vinegar on chips and salt and vinegar potato chips and pretty much vinegar on everything was um, the go to of my childhood. So, uh, I mean, I I just love that whole. I think it's that kind of Carolinas southeast corner of the states where you've got the um you know all the vinegar sauces and how it goes with pork especially is just like killer for me so uh, i'm a big fan of that in fact i was judging last year i judged a competition where somebody somebody's pork box came in and you could taste the vinegar sauce in the slices um and i thought it was brilliant i loved it but um 
I did see the rest of my judges over here, the, some of their scores, and they were not as in love with it as I was. Oh, so no. That team hit it with one judge and they would have gone, well, that judge really liked it. <laughs> the other five weren't, weren't as keen. Um, but I think that's just a taste thing, you know, within the country. Um, it's all about sweet over here, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the same here as well. Um, so tell me, what, what barbecue do you love to cook on? What's on your, on your back porch at the moment? Um, so more barbecues than I'm meant to have is on my back porch. Um, and I think that's standard plans. for, 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 think, for barbecue guys. <laughs> I think it is. Um, and, and obviously always plans for the next one. Um, but the one I'm enjoying the most at the moment, um, is my PK TX. Um, so I bought a PK probably about, know, about six, nine months ago. Um, and I love it. I love it for at home because it's so easy. I think I primarily, I bought it as a steak cooker, um, thinking for when, you know, we're, the SEA is getting a lot more popular. And I was like, okay, well, I probably need something for steak. And it was a good excuse to buy a, another barbecue. Um, and so I picked up the PK TX and silver. And what I found is actually, um, I don't use it a lot for, for the slower stuff. I've got other rigs that I use for that. But for things where I want to cook 300 and above or, or grill steak, it's just brilliant. And it's portable, it's light, it's easy to get going, it holds its heat. Um, like we do our chicken on it at competitions because um, we cook our chicken pretty hot. So that's become our chicken cooker. Um, and I think I just love the look of it. You know, it's a, it's a real mid-century piece of design out of, out of the States. It's that kind of like, you know, if you, if you know who Don Draper is, he, he would have a, a PK, you know, it's that kind of classic American design from the fifties and it hasn't changed. I mean, it's pretty much the same design unless you get a PK go or a 360, you know, that PK TX or the classic, I mean, it's pretty much the same design since I think something like 1954. So they got it right. And why change it? Right. It's a great little cooker. It's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm not sure if, if this is a hundred percent correct, but I, I have heard a story that the company was producing them from the fifties and then they stopped for a while. And, uh, the, the son or the grandson of the founder, um, discovered one of the originals and then restarted the company molding off that, off that original. So it's got quite an interesting sort of back history to it too. Yeah. I think I've seen that story as well. I think I saw it pop up in the, you know, there's always a, there's obviously a PK grill smoking group on Facebook. So um, I'm pretty sure I've seen that pop up once or twice there. So I think you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually got a, a PK 360 and it's one of my favorites. It's just, it's just beautiful at all. And what I like is that there's um, the seams because it's uh, cast molded aluminium. It just, there's no leaks. It's, yeah. It's no, beautiful. It's, it's rock solid. And even when you have a probe wire coming out of it, it still seals like pretty much all up and it, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Um, mm. But yeah, you do have to watch it at the start because it can, if you put too much in it, it can get up there pretty quick. And I've seen some pretty high temperatures on mine by mistake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pull back down again. Yeah. I, I actually did a bit of a test video with mine where I um, just, just did a burn in and then I uh, set the video camera on the temperature dial and then played with the, with the vents and then recorded how long it took for the, temperatures to come up and down and yeah it, it was really cool did you get the one with the cart has it got the the folding comp yes. cart oh yeah yeah so um yeah it's just like a i like guess an x shape um cart it folds down and you're meant to be able to i think you can you're meant to be able to bungee strap the unit to the cart and almost pull it around like um you know like luggage uh yep. but I, I i haven't quite been brave enough to bungee cord the <laughs> cast aluminium because you know i'm quite aware that if you do drop it it's gonna and it cracks that's that's a, that's it it's done yeah it is done right so i i just take mine apart so uh, when as comes to comps it goes into you know we we break it down and i have been known to take the the shell in the car and put the the rest in the trailer but um i have sort of i think my trailer packing skills have increased a bit now so where i'm more comfortable to put the the shell in the in the trailer as well so it doesn't rattle around in the back of the car and annoy everybody yeah fair enough man fair enough so 
if I've, I've, I've worked out, I have three rules for a hobby. Um, the, the, this is how it gets me interested. So if a hobby can be vaguely competitive, um, which obviously barbecue is whether you're competing or not, it's competitive. Um, and that's why I was big into diving for a long time as well. How about how deep you could go and all this kind of stuff. Could you go deeper than the next person for longer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so can it be vaguely competitive? Yes. Great. Tick. Can I spend a ridiculous amount of time doing it? Like I need entire weekends, things I have to travel, I have to go places, I have to be able to go to shops and just be literally standing in for an hour to be happy, all that kind of stuff. Um, and can I spend a ridiculous amount of money on things all the way through? And if it ticks all those three boxes for me, I'm in 100%. <laughs> So if it's a game of excess that you're in. Oh, it, it just, I, my wife rolls her eyes because she's just like, this is just, uh, the other day we were, um, we went through the competition schedule for the, for the year here and we were kind of marking out where we wanted to go, which ones we were going to do. And I was, and then I of course add more in as others get it announced. I'm like, oh, there's another one here. And, and her, her normal thing is it's a long weekend, isn't it? So she's always like, why do they always put barbecue competitions? on public holiday weekends. So you just take out the long weekend for us. Thanks very much. And um, yeah, she's just like, so uh, that's, you know, nine, 10 weekends you want to be away from the family now. So now I'm trying to get my family to do much more <laughs> and come to the competitions so that I can go <laughs> without the same level of, of, uh, you know, of problems. <laughs> Good strategy. Yeah. Get them in there. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, now let's jump into the barbecue-based podcast story. Tell us, uh, tell us how you put that, that together. So, um, I mean, we've been around for not as long as you. We've been around for a year now, um, just coming up, because we were, we were a baby. Um, I think you, you could call us, but it's been something that I'd been talking to my partner in crime on the, on the show, Noel about for, um, probably three or four months before then, but we hadn't kind of got it, but we sort of said, yeah, there's a gap here. There's something that we should do. Um, and, and to be honest, it was another reason to spend time talking about it, being part of the scene and let's face it a little bit more attention, right? Which we all we all love. Um, so it's, it's very much a passion project, but, um, we finally kind of went, okay, let's do this sort of March last year properly. Um, and due to my job, I'm in the marketing industry. So I have a few contacts at radio stations and networks and all that kind of thing. So we, very helpful. We got some, <laughs> yeah. We got some studio time at a, at a station and we went in and we did, did our first show and, you know, it's probably that show is so different to how we do it now because um, we were just sort of doing lots of things. We had um, we had a load of audio that we'd recorded. I ran around whilst competing at Meatstock in February that year. I was running around doing lots of audio interviews just on my phone and collecting them all up. And then we edited those in and did a piece like that. Um, but over the last years, so we've done 22 episodes we've released. Um, 20 last year and then we restarted this year with the first couple and it's just been one of those rides of talking to a really diverse range of people both you know from New Zealand and abroad and and you'll know because you were one of our one of our guests um at, at a point last year but you know talking to guys out of um the US talking to some of our best cookers here best comp teams some of the people who we know have got some of the best barbecue brains around. It's just been, it's been a great ride and it's just so much fun to do. And we try to have a lot of fun with it, right? We're, we're not a super serious show. We do, um, do give some tips and some tricks and, and that kind of thing, but we like to have fun with it. And we're, we, hopefully there's some humor in there as well. And we have a couple of sections, you know, um, people are now starting to ask me about my intros for Noel. So Noel Hassapladakis over here has, he, um, he's a bit of a New Zealand barbecue legend here. He, um, he's referred to as barbecue Jesus. Um, 
So <laughs> controversial. It's controversial. It's controversial a little bit, but he's known he's known of that through all the the NZBA Facebook pages and everything like that. So it's like a default thing. So I just started giving him ridiculous introductions, you know, each time to the show. And I I think I did it on the first one just as a bit of a laugh. And then I did it on the second one. And then I just carried on. And literally for our last one, um, somebody was posting on our Facebook page, oh, I can't wait to hear the intro that you give him. <laughs> and then coming back to us afterwards going, oh, yeah, that was a great intro and almost rating the, the intro. <laughs> so so we do the stuff like that and we have, but then we have serious interviews, not serious, but, you know, like proper interviews um, where we are interested in techniques and styles and things. And, you know, so the last week I was just saying we had Joe, Joe Pierce from Slaps On, which was an awesome, um, awesome chat. Um, we've had... Harry Sue, we've had um, some of our top winning guys, the uh, Brendan Reismer, who is the smoking meat house over here, who he was the the 2020 team of the year. So, you know, he was one of our earlier guests. Um, so we have all that stuff. And then we, we finish, as you know, Ben, with um, a section called 10 Burning Questions, which may or may not have loosely been based on some YouTube show which apparently is pretty popular around chicken wings and hot sauce i don't know i I haven't really followed it but apparently there might be a show who knows um where you know we use uh this new zealand based chili sauce called dragon's fury which is from a company called fire dragons chili which is just purely made from carolina reapers uh so it's pretty hot i think we got you because we couldn't get you any on time we you might have um, seen michael at heavenly hill i and- did I, I i went down to heavenly hill and i got a bottle of their chili sauce Exactly. So, um, and the basic premise is super easy. We take a stupid amount of hot sauce and we eat it on a cracker. And then we try to ask 10 questions and get 10 answers to the same set of questions each time. And um, that's been a particular personal journey for me, mainly because when we started, my head would pretty much explode and I'd, my neck would be throbbing and I would lose the power of speech <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. And I, I think I've actually built up some, uh, some, some tolerance over the last year into which fact normally now I'm, I'm getting quite good at it. And even on our, we did a special Christmas show where we went back into a studio and we had cameras. So we just put it on YouTube as well. But, um, we did, we got in some of our favorite guests through the year and we did what we called chicken from hell where we got a um, certain chicken takeaway bucket of chicken um, might have some reference to an American state in the title. Um, and we, we got a collection of hot sauces and we worked our way through these hot sauces um, going up in intensity and we each guest came on for each round and then, but Noel and I stupidly said, Oh, we'll just eat every single chicken wing. We'll do every round. Like, and you guys just get to do one. <laughs> And we got to the last one and the last, we'd already done the Dragon's Fury. So we'd done the Carolina Reaper one. We got to the last round, which we used the last dab, which I believe has been made very popular by this YouTube chicken wing show anyway, um, which is made from Carolina Reaper X. So if you've, if you've seen, um, if you've seen, there's a great show on Netflix called We Are The Champions. And episode two of that has the world chili eating um special competition right i i did see that yeah yeah it's amazing it's an amazing show and the guy who hosts the competition um is called smoking dave or something like that but he's the guy who invented the carolina reaper right so he's in carolina so yep and he he's made and the carolina reaper was the hottest in the world i think it's 1.6 million scovilles was the carolina reaper right so that's hot the Reaper X is like the Reaper on steroids and it coming in at somewhere between kind of 2.2 and 2.8 million scovilles. So the last dab is made by for, with Reaper X. So we got to the end of our chicken, we had this Reaper X uh, last dab and we had Michael Cook from the Cook Cartel on and we did it and, and it was, I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, we're like, okay, it's pretty hot. You know, you got the usual spikes through the tongue and all that kind of stuff. And I looked and I, I was like, oh, we've got three pieces of chicken left. And there's still three of us here. So should we finish off the chicken? And we said, well, okay, well, for this one, we'll do a combo hit of, and we ended up taking the 
the Dragon's Fury, which is the Reaper and the Last Stab, and mixing them into a single source oh, and putting gosh. them on there. And that was pretty hot. <laughs> I tell you, that was pretty painful. But that seems to have become our na- now. That's becoming our new normal. So the last two shows, we've done that again, just on the crackers. So I'm not sure. I think we're either descending into some levels of sort of madness or um, maybe the tolerances are picking up for us. But I guess I start to feel a bit sorry for because they haven't had the same opportunity to build up the tolerances that we have. Yeah. And they're coming in and getting the full smack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one question that I did want to ask you is, um, has seen a whole lot of uh, podcasts pop up. Um, but a lot of people still ask me, what's a barbecue podcast? Like, what, what, what's a podcast? Um, what do you see as being the future of barbecue podcasts? Ooh, that's a good question there, isn't it? Um, I, think, I think it's like anything, isn't it? Um, if you have content that is engaging and people find of either use or entertainment or of interest, it's going to survive. And I think right now we're obviously riding this massive wave of barbecue popularity, which has had another big boost from COVID globally. Um, So it is a bit of the hot thing right now. Um, Luckily, I think for both of us, we might be the only podcast on this topic in our country. So we have a certain uh, market position, which we'll be um, defending and we've, we've got the jump. Um, But it's kind of like, you know, I listen to maybe seven or eight different barbecue podcasts. And so all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot more than that, isn't there? No, I know, I know, I know. I'm joking. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, so, you know, and I could spend, I could spend all week listening to barbecue podcasts, um, but I didn't have anything else to do. But all of them are slightly different and they've all got their, they've all got their kind of position and the thing they do. You know, we talked about earlier, um, all that for six pieces, which is 100% hard out competition barbecue, right? So I listen to that because I love competition barbecue and I go, cool, that's a great one. But I also listen to Malcolm Reed every week and he is pretty much 100% focused on the backyard person and the person mm. who might never have picked up that pit of meat before or whatever. So he's, he's super easy to follow, but he's really entertaining. So I still listen to that every week. I listen to yours because uh, I'm interested in the Australasian scene and, you know, the, the types of people you have on. I listen to the tailgate guys because they are different again. So as long as all of, as long as you're not coming out with a straight copy of something and you're offering something new, or something with a different twist than the than the next guy, then I think there's a position as long as you're doing it regularly and doesn't need to be every week, although I know lots, including yourself, you do. We do ours every two weeks, um, and that's our kind of cadence for it. But I think we'll see probably a few more pop up, um, and we'll see some drop off. But it's – hey, look, go back to that that thought around – you know, do the judges determine the competitions or is it the cooks? And you see the same top teams in the top 10 and those barbecue podcasts, you'll see some come and go, but the good ones, they will be there in two, three, four years. I mean, some of those ones, like I think the tailgate guys has been going for about five years mm. both on radio first and then into podcast form. And some of them are going, you know, uh, Greg Rempe on the you know barbecue central show. He's been, going for like, like 15 years thousands or something, of episodes yeah. or something right so cream rises to the top the good stuff will stay people will be interested so I, I think i think as long as you're doing a good job um there's room for a lot of people in this particular sandbox mm, but not more nice. in new zealand obviously no more yeah. <laughs> it's no room there's only room for one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice one nice one all right so now tell us about burnt beginnings barbecue your your competition team yeah, so um, that, that, that was one of the, those kind of impulsive things after essentially getting into barbecue for maybe a year going, hey, we can do competition barbecue, right? That'll be cool. So I was, I was texting with a mate of mine who um, had actually been on, he got into the top 50 of New Zealand MasterChef. Um, oh, wow. And, and then bombed out. He won't mind me saying this bombed Ooh. out massively in the first televised round. Uh, 
because he he overcooked and he hates this, but he overcooked his venison in the you know in that round where they all get to take one plate up and they're all like, yep. Yep. "Judge me, give me an apron or or don't." And yeah, I know how good he is at cooking and all this kind of stuff. So I just said to him, "Hey, would you be keen?" And he it was like, "Yeah, yeah, let's do this." And I was like, "Okay, well, let's do meat stock as our first one. Why wouldn't you do the biggest thing? The <laughs> go big or one. go home." Yeah. Exactly. And then we were like, then they released the QMU show for us, which is in January. So it was about a month before we went, let's do that one as a warm up. That'll be cool. So then we we're doing that one. And then he got a call saying, did he want this last spot? Did we want the last spot in the big boys toys, which was a show that used to happen in November here, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was about two weeks after we said we'd do it. And I was like, I can't do it because I was away or something. He went, I'm going to just do it on my own and <laughs> see what happens. So he goes down and does this and he's got stories because he just, he lives up north. So he'd gone to the butcher and gone, I need a side of ribs. And they're giving him a side of ribs. And so like at 2 a.m. on the Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, him and another guy down here, Mike Kovic from a Notorious PIT, was, they were, Look at they they'd found a saw and they were literally sawing his ribs, which were full spares, into St. Louis cut <laughs> ribs at drunkenly at two a.m. so he could actually cook <laughs> these ribs the next day. But you know he was hooked and and so we we did all of the 2019 season together and we got through to we did meat stock and then we we parted. Um, and I think the reason behind that was just it was just like two people who were the same you know we wanted to both be the we were both the alpha cook if you like and and we he actually said look i think before this descends into a non-friendship kind of thing i'm gonna back away um and in fact he's kind of gone now down into the catering route and i think he kind of went i've done the the competition thing for a while it was fun but it wasn't 100 percent for me whereas i'm like i'm a competition cook it's, it's what I love and I love doing it and the challenge of it. Um, so we've been going since 2019 officially and 2019 and 2020, I mean, 2020 was a little bit um, convoluted for a number of reasons, including resetting our entire um, cook setup halfway through because he owned the pit. Um, so Martin owned the pit. because ah. he, Like we started off, you know, as usual, we started off, the first competition we did, we had two Oklahoma Joe Highlands. We had a pit barrel. We had a, a Weber kettle. We had every piece of equipment under the sun that we thought we could get <laughs> all packed into two cars and a trailer. And like, Sounds yeah, familiar, yep. Normal, normal kind of thing. And then he bought um, another competitor's pit off them who was selling it. And um, it was this huge Swiss-built pit um called a cactus jack and it was a an offset like a huge offset uh with a, a a vertical stack on the end as well so this thing was like massive it weighed about 400 kilos and he then decided he was going to strip his trailer off and create a trailer pit and had a mate who did some fabricating so they got it basically mounted onto the pit with a big like um you know, ledge on the front. So we had a bit of workspace and that kind of thing. So we were cooking on this huge offset and, um, you know, needed feeding like every 30 minutes or something like that. And, and when he left, he obviously had that offset and I was like, okay, what are we going to do here? And I was like, the thing I really want to concentrate on is getting more sleep. <laughs> we were just getting no sleep at these things. Cause you had, somebody had to sit by this thing the whole time. And when you're doing winter competitions and it's a long cold like, night, yeah, when you're in somewhere like Napier, which can get down to kind of like, you know, zero and below on some of those, it's chilly. So I was like, how do we do that? And so I ended up rejigging the the um, setup. So now we run two Pro-Q Excels um, for our big meats because those things you just, once you've got those dialed in, they will sit there for ages. So they're, mm. they're great units. Um, yeah. And we run still run the pit barrel because I love the pit barrel for ribs. And um, that's my rib machine. And now I've added the PK, which does our kind of hot and fast and our chicken and stuff. So we've got it down to four pits and occasionally five if we've got a, you know, a heavy SCA or something. We're bringing the, we bring a little Weber GA and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's now myself and uh, the third member of our team who was the the third 
one at that time. So now we're now essentially a two man team with every, pretty much every competition we throw in a mercenary spot for anyone who wants to come in and essentially we need somebody to wash dishes. Um, <laughs> Because I've I've worked out over the time that we've done it, you know, um, some teams run on the ability for everybody to do a a meet. Other teams run on defined role. We're kind of a defined role team. Mm -hmm. Um, I cannot help but be in everything for the the cook and the flavor. You know, I set all the flavors. I set the sauces. I do all that. I do all the rubs. I source everything. That's my domain. Matt is basically the right hand for me. So he, um, and he, he is not a avid cook, if that makes sense, but he just does so much other stuff that makes our lives easier. Like last competition, he'd rigged up, he, we're, we're good friends, um, through our wives and he, we were chatting and he was going, oh, on the Friday, we're going down on the Friday. I've just got to, I'll meet you a little bit later because I've got to go to cash converters because I've seen this screen that I want to get and I've got an idea about how I'm going to rig it up and how we're going to get everything sorted. And I was like, okay, whatever. And he goes and buys a screen for like a hundred bucks and he turns up with it. It's like a 40 inch um, TV, you know, um, computer monitor. Oh, a TV screen. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. He's got this like computer monitor and and then at the competition, he's rigged it up. So it's hanging on one of our gazebo walls and he's got his computer running through it and he's connected his phone and we've got our fireboard connected all the way through there. So we've got our fireboard and the time and our schedule is all on this 40 inch screen and it's completely digital. Normally we'd have bits of paper flying everywhere and people are walking over and having a look at the unit, but we've got everything on this screen. It was brilliant. And it just took so much um, stress out of the weekend and we did really well and awesome. great stuff. So he does lots of stuff like that. Like he takes care of the boxes and does all the parsley and shows the other people what we expect. And then he'll just come up with things like he, the other two competitions ago, he started taking wet, um, sprayed paper towels when we're coming up to boxing and we would open, he opens the box and he puts, he makes a square of wet paper towel over probably the the first inch or so of the parsley in the box because I'm not, I've been known to spray the old sauce around every now and again. And so, you know, so that we wouldn't have to clean the box, he makes a little protective area over it and then we put the food in the middle and then you just whip away the, the, you know, the paper towels and, and it's a perfectly, there's no little sauce splat here or a bit where I've kind of touched a bit of chicken to the box and like, Oh God, I don't have to scrape that off. And especially cause a few competitions now are moving away from the shiny, easy to clean polystyrene boxes mm. to to you know more eco-friendly recyclable you know recycled options and those things as soon as you get a dab of sauce on them that they're, they're is, it's stained and you're like oh <laughs> you know so he just he he thinks of all those little things like that whereas i'm thinking big picture he thinks the micro detail which is awesome so we wear it really well as a team and then you know like i say we we offer a spot pretty much at every comp and we say, yeah, if you but- want to come along, learn stuff, but you'll be doing the washing up. Cause that's, and that's actually a really vital part of competition. Cause if I had to go, you know, we, when you're in your forehand in zone, if one of us has to go and take 20 minutes queuing up at the sink or whatever to do the washing up, that's time that we're not doing something else that is actually mm. really valuable. So, so that third person or fourth person sometimes is, is as important, and I think they're as big a part of the team, even if they are on a rotating thing, than than we are, because they make us happen. Yeah, definitely. Now, just quickly tell me about this perfect score brisket. I'm dying to know about this. <laughs> this was a huge surprise to us, actually. All right. Um, so we were down at uh, we were down at a, a brand new competition called Battle of the Barbecues, which was down in Tauranga recently um, on a holiday weekend, of course. Uh, so I was away on holiday weekend, which my wife was thrilled about. But um, we had last year we bought a couple of not eight to nines, but six to seven marble score Wagyu Carraras, and we got them, and we'd used one, and then for various reasons we didn't use the second one 
because we'd had one competition that was an open beef category. So we did beef ribs that day. The next one that came up was supplied, like the brisket was supplied. So we're like, okay, well, we don't need to take it out. And this was the next one up. So I took it out. And these things are huge. Like if you've had a Carrara before, I mean, I know they're good. I think they're Queensland beef, aren't they? I think um, so, yeah. They're bloody great. I love them for comp. They're very rich. But I mean, the things are massive. It looks like the side of an elephant when you get it. And you know, so it's, I think this thing was topped out somewhere around 11 kilos when like, wow, and I was like, this thing's enormous. So, you know, you do your normal comp trim on it. So I got it down to, you know, like three kilos of flat and probably a kilo, a kilo and a half of, of point. Um, but we cooked it and we, and we were reasonably happy with it when we boxed it. Well, Hey, it was good. I mean, the burnt ends went in the box, which is always a good sign. As far as I'm concerned, normally the burnt ends, you're just like, oh, they're not quite there, so they stay out. You know, you've got to be really ruthless. Um, and it went in, and I didn't think it was the prettiest, but, and if anything, I was like, well, maybe it's a touch over, but it's okay. You know, it bent really nicely, but if somebody did the, I thought if somebody did the, you know, put it on the table and bend it back on itself, oh, it came apart, it, it pulled apart beautifully. Oh, okay. Um, and it bent over the finger really well. But the third test, um, which some judges do, is they put it flat on the table and then they take one end and bend it back over itself. Okay. So, and if it, the rule is if it supports its own weight, it's cooked properly. If it pings back, it's under. And if it collapses, it's over. Right? And I was like, uh, would it hold up? I'm not sure. But, you know, we handed it in and we were like, oh, it was all right. Probably not, not best, not, not the worst. And we were sitting at, um, we we're sitting at the results and we're, and, and we've listened and they're announcing you know, the top 10 and it's gone down and, and Matt's looked at me and we're at two. It, it got to two and they announced two and we're like, oh. And Matt's gone, where do you think our, where do you think ours came? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe 11th, 12th. You know, that would be good, wouldn't it? If it came 11th or 12th, maybe we were just outside because we we're reasonably happy with it. And then they read out our name and I remember just sitting there and looking around. And then, um, Matt was looking at me and then um, I could hear Matt Melville from Rum and Q, one of our sponsors and one of the, you know, the really good teams over here. He was like yelling and, oh, it's kind of, and then I just looked back at uh, Carl Granger, who was the guy doing the announcing and he's, he's like nodding going, yes, it was you. I said, and I was like, Jesus, I think we won this. <laughs> so we go, we just ended up going up, but it was, um, and it was a surreal experience, you know, like uh, it was our first official first place. So we were stoked with it. And um, all of something, which as usual, we put it in and went, oh, it was all right. <laughs> you know, Because every time we've gone, we actually had a rule at that competition. I put in a rule because I, the last few I'd been saying to people, so happy with my ribs, so happy with the chicken. They looked amazing. Oh, just the best ones we've ever done. And then our chicken like came 38th out of 39th and the ribs would come 30th and I'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> what's that, what that judges tent? But, um, you know, <laughs> this, this competition, we said, look, we're not going to say anything about anything. We're just going to put it in and see what happens. And that one between us, we were going, hmm, it was all right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't, we didn't think it was amazing, but obviously it hit the right table and it was better than we thought and it got a perfect score, but it was just another brisket cook for us. You know, we were like, okay, cool. Knock it in and off we go. I think at that point, it's always the last of the weekend and you're pretty tired and ready to roll. So um, it was, yeah, a normal brisket for us. We just put it in and, and walked away and went, okay, let's see what happens. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. Alrighty, Alex. So we're in our third segment now, and this is our, our lesson for the viewers and for the listeners. And being a being a marketing and, and advertising guy, I thought it might be nice if you would give our our viewers and our listeners some tips and advice for um, how they can raise the profile of their various teams and businesses that they're in. Yeah, um, and it's obviously something I do every day, so that's true, I'll try to. Um, but I think it comes down to actually – being quite simple and being quite focused. And I think there's a couple of things you can think about. Obviously social is king for this because you can do it. It's 
generally free um, if you're doing it from a team level, you know, just looking to get a bit of a following and maybe attract some sponsors and that kind of thing. So I think the first thing is to focus on the content you're putting out. Really think about what is the message you want to get across by each thing that you do. Is it who are you talking to? What is going to make them want to hit like? Because the thing with these like team pages and businesses, even it works the same. You normally get to about two or 300 likes very quickly because that's all your mates and all your family and all the people who give it a like because you went, oh, can you like my page? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you can get to 300 pretty easy. The struggle is getting from 300 to 1,000. And then once you get over 1,000, you're starting to build that kind of critical mass and you'll start to roll all that kind of stuff. Um, so like some really little tricks that you can do, something that actually Matt, this is why he plays the role he does in our team. I was going, man, we're getting loads of likes recently. What is going on here? And people are going, well, that's weird. That's cool. But yeah, great. I'm getting all the notifications. And Matt goes to me, oh, I've been, um, everyone who likes a post, but if they don't follow us, I'd send them an invite to like the page. And I was like, ah, it's you. (laughs) You're the one generating the likes. That's great. So, you know, there are little things like that. Think about that. Think about if you're doing, um, Facebook and Instagram, which are the easiest ones, if you post it on Instagram and use hashtags and click for the in, for the automatic post to your Facebook page, you're going to get those hashtags as well. So some of those are going to come through. And actually what I found is on Instagram, hashtags are really, really important and they do get you additional followers and people who will see it and it's all from around the globe and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not a big fan of over promoting brands too early. I know people want to do it and they want to tag every rub they use and every source and every charcoal and all that kind of stuff. Cause you know, they want that brand to notice them or do stuff like that. But I think you'll get better initial traction by just taking it easy on that stuff and building the following. Cause they want to see your content and really good food rather than tagging in all the brands like tag the brands in when you've got sponsorships with them and then there are Mm. rules and stuff which you should be following um so you know when i do a tag for heat bees for example it always comes up as this is it actually says it's a paid promotion it's not i'm just being kind of is because they're giving me product right but i'm doing it because i just want to be safe and i don't want to have them get into any problems by something that i did either um I think once a day is the maximum and for barbecue, it's probably even a bit less, like don't worry about it. Most of the posts for barbecue teams come up either they're people doing weeknight cooks or on the weekends, right? So think about your frequency. You don't want to overload people because they'll switch them off and they'll, they'll go away rather than going, delivering them good stuff. But, but ultimately it comes down to the content Um, and think about, that content that you're putting out there, is it shot nicely? It doesn't have to be shot in a studio, but have you actually thought about the composition? I'm really bad at that. I'll put my hand up straight away. I take photos and I put them up and I look at them the next day. I'm like, oh, I probably should have moved all that washing up that's in the background. <laughs> before I took. But I'm really excited about it. So I'm taking pictures of it and, and that kind of, but even thinking about the angle or clean the board before you do it or have another board that you use just for the, the, the shots, put a bit of greenery on it. Every, you know, there are what millions of pictures of a floppy brisket. We've all seen that, but brisket with a bit of side or with something that shows how you're helping to accentuate that regular cook is going to be way better um, in the long run. So just think about that and think about any ancillary pieces of content. Like I know over here uh, used to be with heat beads, for example, with the comp team sponsorships, they would give you a certain amount a year and they just said, oh, just post thing. And they've got some new people in their marketing departments here. So they've, they've timed up and it's really good. And they're like, look, these are the levels that we expect. Here's the amount of posting per month. This is what we expect going into competition. And what's actually thrown a few people luckily I have a ready-made source of this is they say, we want one piece of bespoke content for us every quarter. 
to satisfy your contract so that you're generating additional content. So, you know, I was able to go, great, I'll have one of you guys on the podcast and there's, there's one for us. <laughs> you know? But, you know, thinking about stuff like that. So I know, Ben, when we got into competition, I, for example, downloaded your competition ebook and read all of that. And I was like, brilliant. And that's why I started following all the stuff that you do. Cause I was like, okay, cause I was just searching for competition tips and tricks. That's all I was doing. And that popped up. And from there I then went, well, okay, that was good content. So I guess I'm going to follow smoking hot confessions, see if more stuff like that comes up and it's, you know, content is king. And we've said that in the advertising industry for ever since I've been in it 20 years and it's always been content is king. Content is king. You can tell somebody anything you want, but if it doesn't resonate and it doesn't offer value to them, they're not going to care. Mm -hmm. So think about your audience is really the biggest thing I think for any type of marketing and the sponsors will come if your content's really good as well. You don't need to go and sort of make yourself a walking ad for six months Mm. because it's really, it's really, yeah, you see through it really quickly. So yeah. that's, that's, those are probably the top tips, I reckon. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, that, that's some really good advice in there. So I, I think now's probably a good time to start rounding out the episode. So I'm going to throw the studio over to you. You can give some shout outs and some thanks and, and uh, tell everybody where they can track you down on the internet. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Ben. I think there are a few people that we would thank, both from a show perspective and team perspective. Um, look, if you haven't listened to us, the first person that I thank each time is is my partner in crime, Noel. Um, and actually, if you're looking for a great um, channel to follow, he is the Meat Mafia Collective. And he's probably one of the voices of barbecue in New Zealand and growing way outside of that now. So I think he's up to something like seven or 8,000 followers on Facebook now. Um, and he posts a load of stuff. So definitely go and have a follow of him. Um, our sponsors for the, for the team, um, rum and Q who are actually another team, but they've got their own rub line. So we use all of their rubs and amazing rubs. And we really thank them for, um, believing us, supporting us, giving us all the advice and, and hopefully we'll see a lot of them. They are available in Australia at the Q club. So I believe, um, they can do online shipping and all that kind of stuff, but their blackout and their rib rocker rib rocker is a rub that I've just not seen the color anywhere else that you get except with this rub on ribs. So it's our main, our main, um, rub guys, uh, look, heat beads, of course, cause they've supported us nearly from the beginning and they do a lot of stuff with us on the show and things like that. So thank you to those guys. Just some of the people who are just awesome people in, in New Zealand barbecue, Brendan Reismer, who we mentioned earlier, who's the smoking meat house and team of the year. He's a solo cook. He, he, you can ask Trevor Dawson about him. If you ever, uh, if you know Trevor, um, out there, he and Brendan off both solo stuff over here all the time. And they're both amazing cooks, but he's always so happy to give his advice and his help. Um, barbecue boy up in Bay of Islands, which is Ken Van Mackelberg, who's a friendly resident Canadian Kiwi chef barbecue god um, which we we love very much and look i think the the other really big one for me is um what certainly in this market jack daniels and luke Sini, who is the he's like the national sales and marketing manager for jack daniels but they have built our barbecue scene from the ground up so they sponsor so many of the events. Luke's head of the NZBA and everybody who works for the NZBA should get a thank you, you know, because all those guys who put the judging together run the contest for us. There's no barbecue contest without that brand and those people here. So just big thanks to everybody and everybody who listens to us. So hopefully there might be a few more. You never know. I dare say um, there will be, mate. You guys do a great job. <laughs> and we're pretty easy to find. Like if you just search barbecue base, um, barbecue spelt B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E, you know, or, or the full word. In any of your spot, um, Spotify or podcast platforms, you'll find us. And um, you can find us at Barbecue Base NZ on Facebook. And as I always say, if you're really desperate, you can come and find me at Burnt, Bar uh, Burnt Beginnings Barbecue on Facebook and Instagram. So that's kind of where we are, where you can find us. Beautiful, mate. Well, look, thanks very much for taking the time out on your Sunday afternoon to uh, to hang out here and talk barbecue with me. It's, it, it's been great to have you to have you on, and I look forward to seeing how you go in the competition scene and your podcast in twenty twenty one. 
Thanks, Ben. Um, pr- really appreciate you uh, having us on. Uh, it's been it's been great fun. <laughs> And there you have it, family. That was Alex Lawson from Barbecue Base Podcast and Burnt Beginnings Barbecue. How interesting was that to get into the into the barbecue scene of New Zealand and um, and find out all about that and also the podcast, the competition team, and those tips at the end there for for those of you out there who are looking to build your your brands for your barbecue team or your businesses. Um, some top information there, and I really had I really have appreciated having him come on board the show and share that with us. So that's about all we've got for today. A couple of uh, just quick reminders before I do let you go. Barbicon is coming June 26 and 27. It's the world first online barbecue conference. Saturday is going to be all about cooking. Sunday is going to be all about businesses. So make sure you do keep that weekend free because it's going to be re- something really special. There is the free ebook if you're at the start of your barbecue journey over on smokinghotconfessions.com. Head over there, have a bit of a click around. A pop-up window will appear. Put your details in that. We'll shoot that out to your inbox. We've got the barbecue community, the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community over on Facebook. Come join us over there. It's the friendliest space on the interwebs. And of course, wherever you're watching or listening, do give us the uh, you know all the likes, all the thumbs up, all the five-star reviews. That really helps to trigger the algorithms and push the show out there, and we really do appreciate it. And so that's about all there is. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>